Great. So we just recorded Hannah doing a maximum height jump, and now we'll take a look at what the data looks like from the motion capture, the force plates, as well as the EMG. So let's start with the motion capture. As you see here, you can see all of the different markers that were tracked by our motion capture cameras in the ceiling. And it doesn't look super intuitive as far as what's going on here. So we're just going to point out some key markers and their placements. So you can see the medial knee marker there, right lateral knee, the tracking markers, um, and then, of course, the markers on the foot. So there's Hannah jumping. Let's start it from the beginning one more time. She's dropping down into the counter movement, jumps and lands. So let's talk a little bit about how the cameras are able to triangulate. So if we zoom out here, we can see the eight, the positions of the eight cameras in our volume here, and generally kind of their field of view. And if Here's we, the medial knee marker. Go ahead. Yeah, and if we look at just the medial knee marker, which you remember earlier we talked about how we actually end up removing that anatomical marker because it, um, it's often obstructed from view for the cameras and also it can often um, be hit by the other leg during motion. So you can see right now these three rays means it's being seen by these three cameras. But if we look at the tracking system that we usually rely on to track motion, you can see these five rays and then it's uh, caught by these five cameras. And so the uh, motion tracked by, at, by this, or, so the motion uh, for this marker is going to be more accurate than the motion tracked by um, our anatomical medial knee marker. Great, let's have a look at the ground reaction forces here. All right, so what's cool is we can see the ground reaction forces alongside the motion and play the whole jump one more time. Again, motion capture, here's the vertical ground reaction force. And there goes the jump. You can also see the ground reaction force with this arrow uh, that's orthogonal to the force plate. So before Hannah jumps, we have her just standing on the, on the force plate quietly, and that's about her body weight. And then during the counter movement, um, you'll actually see the force dips down to about a third of her body weight as she's accelerating downwards. Um, and then as she starts to push off the ground, we um, see the force go up to multiple times her body weight, and th that force is able to accelerate her center of mass upwards. We could actually use this force plate trajectory and integrate the area under the curve and figure out the center of mass trajectory um, during the jump. And then here, when she's in flight phase, there's no forces, and then during the landing phase, we see peaks that are around four times body weight. So she's landing, she's absorbing a lot of force, and that's oftentimes when injuries happen um, because she's, everything um, is happening quickly and she's decelerating very quickly as she hits the ground. So let's have a look at what happened with the EMG on, on Hannah's different muscles. Okay, so Scott's gonna play the video. As you can see, as I go through the crouch, here, and then the liftoff phase, we see different muscle activation patterns. So as I'm crouching down, let's just pause and go to that part. So as I'm crouching down, my vastus medialis activates. And then as I'm starting to come back up, my gastroc activates as I'm plantar flexing to leave the ground and take off. And you'll notice the tibialis anterior is fairly quiet through the whole jump because we don't generate a dorsiflexion moment when we're trying to extend the ankle to jump. Great, so that's what it looks like to, to take a motion capture experiment. Um, and we could do this for walking or jumping or any activity that we wanted and have all these signals collected synchronously. It's pretty cool.